Happy New Year and welcome to another Cheshire Freemasons podcast. I hope you all had a lovely Christmas, a great New Year. And did any of you make any New Year's resolutions? I didn't, but I was looking what are the most popular resolutions that people make. So you, if you made any resolutions, you might have made some of these. So the top 10 were exercise more, lose weight, which is probably linked to the first one. Exercise more uh, leads to losing weight. Get organized, learn a new skill or hobby, live life to the fullest, save more money and spend less money quit smoking and spend more time with the family and friends. <laughs> Today I'm joined by Peter Merrick and Mark Armitage. So gentlemen, did you make any New Year's resolutions? Not as such. In my new role as Provincial Grand Steward, I'm out visiting all the time. So it's a three course meal about three time, three or four times a week. So i can't really exercise any more than I already do, so I'm just about keeping on balance. But I would like to lose a few pounds. Literally, if you look at those top 10 resolutions, you won't be losing weight, you won't be spending less money, you're gonna be spending more money, but you will be living life to the fullest. Yeah, maybe. Mark, did you make any New Year's resolutions? Uh, not as such, however, uh, I would like to, of course, lose a few pounds. Uh, help keep the clothes uh, on that I'm wearing so they don't don't outgrow them. A little bit more exercise would be useful, and spending less money or getting more money would also be a good thing. But uh, no particular plans on how to do any of those at this moment. Yeah, I was looking at this other website, and this says the top 10 unusual New Year's resolutions. So do you want to hear them? Here we go. You might not find them unusual. So get your photo taken in five interesting places. That could be five lodges. Learn a decent party trick, uh, which I, I quite I like that challenge. Break a record, not a vinyl record. I think more like a world record. Make a new friend a month. I think that's possible in the season when we uh, the lodges are open because you can easily make a new friend a month. You can just go out visiting. Develop a good relationship with your body. Learn something you never learned as a child. Try a new food each week. Make the usual unusual. Sort out a financial worry. And number 10 was do something nice for others every day. Well, of course, guys, we're Freemasons. We, we do that anyway, don't we? Yes, uh, well, we should be if we're not. <laughs> Yet, yeah, uh, because I've visited so many lodges uh, in, in the last, well, since October, I've been to 26 lodges and the team the provincial team we've bonded really well but apart from them uh, you're meeting new people all the time so that's great that's what i love doing oh excellent mark it's great to have you with us today now you are new to freemasonry so i'm interested in what lies ahead for the year for you or what you think lies ahead because i believe you're a fellow craft and sometime this year you'll be doing your third degree uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, I've been a uh, Freemason now for 11 months, 11 months as of last Friday, oddly, oddly enough, uh, and I'm expected to be able to do my third degree for Master Mason either next month or the month after, so February or March, depending on uh, the, the schedule that's agreed to by the more higher-ups within the lodge who are organising all this. So that's uh, where I'm up to at the moment. Uh, the rest of the year, not sure if I will be taking on any new role within the lodge, but I will be sort of expanding my experiences within the Freemasons. Um, I'm visiting a, a brand new lodge for the first time next Wednesday. I've been invited to attend another lodge, so that'll be an interesting experience. And also I'm gonna be working a bit more with the, the comms team on a, a new segment that they're looking at starting and expanding on, but it's not yet been put into motion, so I'm not sure how much I can speak about. <laughs> well, welcome to the comms team. I look forward to uh, having you part of our team. So Peter, what lies ahead this year for you? Uh, more visiting, lots of uh, visits to do, uh, mainly 50th and 60th and 100 year celebrations. So I'll be doing that as part of the provincial team. Uh, I'm first principal in Hamilton chapter in Ellesmere Port and we've got our installation next Thursday. So I've been learning my lines for that. Although I am staying in the chair for another year. Uh, I'll be helping out 
at the MMF Academies, a couple, one at Cheshire View, which is not long started out, so I'll be helping out with them. And generally, um, lots of stuff in the lodge as well. I'm lodge mentor, so I'm always busy. It, well, it sounds it. <laughs> so the MMF, I think that's where I first met you. For those listening, uh, Peter and I both reps for the MMF, which is the Masters and Masons Forum, if anyone doesn't know. Uh, they do yeah, a lot of great stuff, and obviously you've got some great stuff planned this year. I'll still be involved to a certain degree, and I'm very surprised that you're still finding the time, Peter, to be involved and be a rep. You'll probably be passing on the uh, the reins to probably Mark. Mark, will we get Mark involved? Mark, when you're a Master Mason, once you've done your third. That's a, that's a great idea, isn't it? Actually, because you're both in the same lodge, so you're going to be in the communications team and you're going to be an MMF rep. <laughs> well, Ali Mayor Michael Shields, so let me know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the MMF, you're going to Portugal this year, is that right? Yes, uh, we're going to do a presentation in, uh, in Lisbon. I think there's probably be about 20 to 25 going to that. The, the deputy PGM is actually going to that, Simon Medlin. Looking forward to that because he is a really funny guy. Okay, what are you after saying that? You after another promotion? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll stick with this promotion for now, thanks. The academies as well. How's the new academy going uh, for the MMF? It's doing well. Yeah, it's um, they've had. I think it's uh, the third meeting on the first Friday of the month. So I think it's probably the third of February is the next one. So uh, I'll be at that one. Things are going well with it, and they have a curry afterwards, so it's always pleasant. Uh, and it's nice for the new guys to come along and see what we do. Excellent. So, Mark, I was joking before, saying you'd be a rep, but it, it will be a, an enjoyable role. But have you ever been to one of the academies at the MMF? Uh, yes, I've been to the Area 5 Academy uh, on two separate occasions. Uh, the first time was when I just made um, I've Entered Apprentice. And I learned an awful lot about about the inner workings of the the Freemasons that you might not learn on the actual evenings themselves. And then the next time was after I was a uh, fellow craft. So um, uh, it seems to be going there every time I, uh, I make up a, a step. But uh, it's it's very interesting, and there's lots of information there, and you get to practice what you do rather than actually messing up on the night, which I probably would do if I was actually doing it in that regard. So it's a, it's a great tool to be a part of. A uh, great great bunch of people to be uh, knowing. Uh, that's that's interesting feedback actually because obviously it wasn't around when I was in your position, you know, fellow crafts. But uh, yeah, it, it's I'm glad to hear that it's uh, it's working. It's it's doing what it's meant to do, and their uh, fellow crafts and entered apprentices and the likes are enjoying it. Okay, so you said obviously you went to the area five one, but you're both in area one, aren't you? But the far end of area one. So you meet in Ellesmere Port, if I'm wrong, interrupt me, <laughs> Stanlow Lodge. But something obviously happened last year at Stanlow Lodge, so you found obviously a new venue. Peter, you can tell tell us what happened to you, uh, your Masonic Hall. Yes, the uh, unfortunately the Masonic Hall, which was much loved and much admired, there was just not enough masons to keep it going, so it had to fold. So all the lodges that met there, I think there were nine lodges and about four chapters, those lo those lodges have moved here, there and everywhere. Some have gone to Neston, some have gone to Cheshire View. I think one maybe went to Port Sunlight. But we stayed in Ellesmere Port, Stanlow Lodge, and we moved to the Whitby Sports and Social Club. Um, we meet mostly in the big ballroom. Uh, sometimes we meet in the oak room if the ballroom is booked for anything. Uh, it has its advantages and it has, has its disadvantages the, dis the main disadvantage is that you have to set the thing up before you do it. So you, you get, we're up there in the afternoon setting it up and then we have to take it down again afterwards. So yeah, not great, but it's uh, the alternative uh, doesn't bear thinking about. So it's been, pre it's been pretty good so far. I'm happy there. And Mark, I presume you're happy there? Absolutely, it's uh, it's it's local, which is a great thing about it. Otherwise, a lot of the other lodges have moved out of Ellesmere Port, and uh, this one is local for me, so I can easily get to it. So that's good. The venue's really good, as far as I can tell. I've only, I've only been there a about a year now. 
uh, but at the same time, it's uh, it's all well laid out when I, when I arrive. But uh, I wish I had time to help them set it up in the uh, the day, so I'm not feeling like I'm just coming around, coming along lately, or late of the evening and just sitting down. As a, as a young new mason, you come across uh, and appear, and 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 you well, you are a very enthusiastic mason, a fellow craft, and you're already wanting to get involved with provincial activities. Uh, I've already rubbed you in to be uh, an MMF rep, but what do you think lies ahead and what is it that, um, why did you join Freemasonry and um, what do you think, what do you think will lie ahead once you've done your third degree? Uh, well originally I had uh, considered joining Freemasonry about five years before I originally did and I actually had a meeting with the Whitby Lodge, I think it was the Whitby Lodge, in uh, the actual Masonic Hall in Ellesmere Port when it was still there. But unfortunately my other commitments at the time meant I couldn't put any extra time into anything else. So it was put on the back burner. And then five years later, uh, my original sort of nominee, what was it, first nominee, Josh Frawley, um, he mentioned through our joint work with the Air Cadets that he was a member of the local lodge. And it suddenly everywhere I looked there were little signs of Freemasonry and things on the television, films, and like, somebody's trying to tell me something here. So I'm like, okay, tell me more. So we started talking about it, and the more I, I heard about it, the more I wanted to be a part of it. So then I met Peter, and uh, both both them very enthusiastic about it, and it sort of, sort of bled onto me. And then, before I know it, I'm filling out forms, having interviews, and being led into a big room full of other people. And... Uh, well, I'm not going to say what happened in the room, but yeah. at the same time, uh, it led me to a, a great bunch of guys who were um, all interested in helping out the local communities and being a part of something larger than themselves, all coming from different backgrounds, different reasons for being there, but at the same time, all there for the same reasons. So it's uh, it's it's good to be a part of, and I'm, and I'm glad I am a part of it now, and I'm hoping to put a lot more into it as I go forward, as I understand and learn more about it. Peter is like your mentor. Your first principal, have you rubbed him into chapter yet? No, so as soon as he is, you get the forms to him. <laughs> you're meant to wait, you're meant to wait, uh, wait, is it four months, is it, or something? So I think, uh, I think it's probably four weeks, it'll be the bare minimum. Yeah, it's uh, no, I went to a red table event uh, the other week, actually, joking apart, and it was good. It was um, obviously, I'm already in chapter St. George's chapter, uh, and we had a few masons from our lodge who were uh, sort of the, they've had their interest peaked. I thought I'll come along to a red table night and uh, find out what it's about. And uh, the next one we have, if we have, we do have another one, Mark, I'll certainly, I'll certainly let you know once you've done your third. Come along to it. And uh, over lockdown, we did do the talking heads. Did you see that over lockdown? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good. I mean, obviously it's much better in person, but that was great. I got to do that with John Lacey over Zoom. Yeah, I was and uh, oh, and Steve Simcox as well. Yeah, Steve and John. I think I took part in. No, the Talking Heads one. Oh, sorry, no. no, that was for chapter, yeah. I mean, we did do a lot over lockdown. It was great, actually, do you know, over lockdown. I, I, the MMF was, sort of kept a lot of people going, I think, because our lodge, you know, I organised a few qu uh, quizzes over Zoom, but, you know, obviously you're getting probably about 25% of your lodge taking up on it. But the MMF was great because in the comfort of my own home, well, sometimes we couldn't even go out, so it was it had to be in the comfort of your own home. But it was good the way we kept doing, you know, the rehearsals or we'd do like a mock ceremony. So it did keep us all engaged where I can imagine, you know, if you'd go two years without it, you'd think, and probably a lot of people did, thinking, oh, do you know what, I'm, I can't be bothered going back. Um, and I think people did actually leave Freemasonry, but they'll, I think they'll slowly come back, obviously, because they, they realise, you know what, actually, I'm bored now, I need something to do. <laughs> I want to go out visiting like Peter 10 times a week. <laughs> so, gents, before we wrap this up, obviously, you know, the theme is a new year, uh, uh, you know, 2023 lies ahead of us. So, outside the Freemasonry, what have you got planned for this year? Is there anything exciting, anything different? Uh, well, outside of my uh, my regular working life and outside of Freemasonry, I'm also a member of the RF Air Cadets. 
and actually I'm an officer on the local squadron Ellesmere Port, 1074 Ellesmere Port Squadron, as well as being Deputy Media Officer for Merseyside Wing. So there's a lot of things going on this year that we're going to be a part of. We're growing the squadron, getting them all the cadets involved in more activities, things they weren't involved in last year, the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme being among them, uh, more target shooting, more adventure training hopefully, sports and community-based activities such as the upcoming Armed Forces Day in Ellesmere Port. So all of that, there's a lot of work going into it. Going to make the Air Cadets one of the uh, more prominent organisations within Ellesmere Port, hopefully, and hopefully get Ellesmere Port more noticed within the Merseyside Wing. So that's uh, what's upcoming for us at the moment. And lots more activities that I'll be involved in personally as my own person because I've got different skill sets that they can make use of. So that should be fun. Excellent. And what about you, Peter? Have you got anything exciting outside the Freemasonry lined up? I know you're retired, so you're probably going on about four cruises. Are you? <laughs> uh, no cruises this year. Um, we are going to Canada for three weeks. My eldest son lives on Vancouver Island, so we, we haven't seen him for four years because of COVID. So that'll be nice. The last time we were there uh, was his wedding, so we haven't seen him since, since then. So that'll be great. Um, Masonic-wise, well, last year I did um, a 1500 mile bike ride uh, to raise money for the festival. So I've got a few ideas. Uh, I intend to do something again this year. Maybe something like walking the Sandstone Trail. Um, I've got my new boots on right now. So uh, yeah, I'll be looking to rope a few people into doing that. So yeah, yeah, good times ahead. Excellent. So I can see, yeah, you're breaking your boots in. Excellent. <laughs> um, well, if you've got any um, anyone that you think might be interested in Freemasonry, our lodge, and this is a cheeky little plug here, our lodge has got an old English night in May. So bring them along. And it's, I mean, the old English nights are always a good night, but it's going to be coronation themed because literally I think it's two or three days before we meet at the beginning of May is obviously the coronation of King Charles, which I'm sure will be will be a huge event. And um, I noticed in our Masonic Hall, I don't know whether, it, well, it wouldn't be the same actually where you live, but any Masonic Halls that, not where you, so it wouldn't be the same where you meet because you don't meet in an official Masonic Hall, but any lodges that you visited, have you noticed the Queen's picture's been taken down? Mm-hmm. But it's not been replaced yet. So I'm thinking, is it we just haven't got ones of King Charles or are we waiting for the official coronation I wonder what the protocol is the official coronation before the actual picture goes up you know in the uh, the dining hall yeah I must ask there must be there must be something to it mustn't it be a protocol uh, yes I'm not really sure what it will be uh, I I thought someone had said to me that we were um, we had a picture ordered but it, we were just waiting for it to come but uh, yeah I, I might be getting that wrong Um yeah, but we'll wait and see. Right, gents, uh, I appreciate your time today. Good luck for the rest of the year, uh, Peter. I know you've got a busy calendar ahead. Mark, I'd love to come to your third. I will try my best to come. Uh, Peter, obviously, will let me know. Come and support you. Good luck uh, this year with the comms team. I, I think you'll be a valuable asset. And uh, I will be sending that email to Mike Shields. And hopefully we'll get him as a MMF rep and we'll get you out visiting and meeting lots of new people in the forthcoming year. Right, gents, good night. Take care and I will see you both soon. Yeah, thanks all. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.